everyone. Today I will be discussing uh, the basics of bacterial cells for the Micro Mission uh, Science Olympiad event, and this is for 2024 to 2025. So, bacterial cells are uh, prokaryotic, which means that they uh, lack a true nucleus and also membrane bound organelles. Everything just kind of floats in the center and nothing is bound by like a membrane. Or, the organelles aren't bound by membrane, sorry. Um, so now we'll be talking about the membrane. And uh, the plasma membrane essentially just consists of a phospholipid bilayer, which you can see here. Um, here's the phospholipid bilayer. And it is embedded with like a bunch of different proteins that uh, serve like functions such as like transport, signaling, and um, obviously like structural support. And this membrane is just described by the fluid mosaic model. Like this entire thing is just the fluid mosaic model. And it just shows how the lipids and proteins sort of move within the layer, uh, which allows for, you know, flexibility and functionality. You can see kind of like there are integral mem membrane proteins, which uh, are like cross membrane, uh, like function across the membrane. And then you have peripheral membrane proteins, which do not like allow certain things to just pass through the entire membrane and are just kind of on the surface. There's also uh, glycoproteins and glycolipids, which sit on the outer uh, layers of the bilayer. And there's also cholesterol, which, you know, allows for like fluidity and um, depends on temperature and whatnot. Also, we can see the filaments of the, cycles, the cytoskeleton here. And, um, okay, so next we will describe um, like the cell wall. The cell wall is primarily made of uh, peptidoglycan, which uh, sort of provides rigidity and protects against osmotic pressure. So peptidoglycan basically is a bunch of just lo like long chains of sugars, which are sort of um, connected by peptides, which give it um, a lot of strength. And then something brief, which we'll be discussed later, is gram positive and gram negative. Uh, and uh, in gram positive bacteria, uh, the layer is very thick and it sort of like retains the crystal violet stained, which is used in gram staining. And so um, on the other hand, we have gram negative bacteria, which has a much thinner layer uh, and has an outer membrane, which can like appear either like pink or red. It kind of depends after it's gram stained. And this sort of like affects susceptib susceptibility to antibiotics and you, this is like what I kind of do to just memorize like, oh, gram negative is just red because like, I don't know, like negative is red, like it's bad. So negative is red and then just know that violet is positive. Um, so yeah, and moving on, we're gonna talk about the flagella or flagellum. And uh, this is composed of the protein called flagellin uh, with an I, and they're essentially anchored uh, to the, the cell membrane, sort of like at the, at the bottom of it. Um, and flagella are basically, um, they, they rotate sort of like a propeller and they provide a, a mobility for the bacteria to basically just swim around towards nutrients or like away from harmful substances. And they do this uh, through a process called chemotaxis. And the energy for this movement comes from uh, like a proton motive force, which is generated um, across the uh, across the plasma membrane. So like basically just a bunch of protons or like H plus ions just move across the membrane, which generates um, energy, which allows the flagellum to move. All right. So now we're going to talk about the pilus and fimbriae. fimbriae. And uh, so pili are like a lot longer and they're sort of hair-like structures that uh, essentially facilitate attachment uh, and genetic exchange through this process, which is called conjugation. And uh, so, okay, like a quick description of conjugation is that it's like a form of horizontal gene transfer in which like one bacterial cell transfers genetic material to another, um, sort of like through a bridge bet uh, between like pilii. So right here, which is called a sex pilii. Um, and this can basically, uh, it creates like genetic diversity and sort of allows the bacteria to share uh, certain traits such as antibiotic resistance, which is how 
um, basically in the human body, we gain resistance to antibiotics. And in comparison to Fimbri, um, Fimbri are a lot shorter and they're a lot more uh, frequent uh, in comparison to Pili. And these bacteria uh, sort of adhere to surfaces, which is um, necessary for a process called colonization. And this uh, process is basically um, and where like bacteria establish themselves in a particular niche or niche. Um, so when they basically through the process of adh adhesion um, adhere to surfaces, uh, they like form communities uh, and create, create like biofilms, which are protective layers of microorganisms, which like stick to surfaces and are often resistant to antibiotics and uh, I'm pretty sure disinfectants as well. All right. Um, next is the nucleoid, um, and as you can see, there's like supercoiled DNA uh, here in the nucleus, and the nucleoid uh, contains the uh, bacterial chromosome, which is like a single uh, circular DNA molecule that is essentially supercoiled for um, storage purposes, I guess, and then it's it's not closed by a membrane which allows it to like directly interact with cytoplasm and we'll discuss cytoplasm here it's basically just uh, all this blue stuff here which you can see that which sort of flows um around uh the non-membrane band organ organelles so um by the so uh, a benefit essentially of its um ability to directly interact with cytoplasm is that it just facilitates sort of um Tra transcription and translation, which we will also talk about later, which is part of the Science Olympiad rulebook, I'm pretty sure. Okay, and now for cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is basically just sort of like a viscous solution, I guess you could call it, which contains um, all sorts of things. It contains like water, ions, proteins, um, ribosomes, and it basically is where like metabolic processes occur. So uh, one of these processes, for example, is just glycolysis which is essentially the breakdown of glucose to um, produce ATP or energy. Um, let me think. Uh, another example of glycolysis is just like protein, um, or sorry, this is not an example of glycolysis, this is just another thing uh, in which, um, which occurs in cytoplasm. And this is protein synthesis, uh, which is where ribosomes essentially translate uh, mRNA or messenger RNA into polypeptide chains and um, yeah okay so finally we're going to talk about uh, plasmids and um, plasmids are basically just small and circular uh, DNA molecules which are very different um, they're, they're not too different but they're different they must be uh, distinct um, from the DNA so as you can see plasmids circular DNA supercoiled and sort of random all over the place. And plasmids basically carry genes that provide certain traits, uh, such as, as previously discussed, um, antibiotic resistance, or the ability to just like um, metabolize um, certain substances which aren't usually found in the cytoplasm. Uh, also, another thing is that plasmids uh, replicate independently of the chromosome. So just think of them as, uh, you know, just different in terms of reproduction and uh, this basically just allows for um, quick adaptation to uh, like changes in pressure um, so they can also be transferred between bacteria through conjugation which contributes to the rapid spread of resistance traits um, among bacterial populations and that will be all um, for um, bacterial cells and yeah thanks for watching